Welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today we will look into the DPET input handling using a Steam Deck and we do the full development also on the Steam Deck. In the beginning we will extend the player um, struct with a new uh, property called key state um, which will represent the individual keys and a boolean flag um, as a value. So the boolean value is used to determine either a key is pressed or not. And then we will use that information to update later our uh, physics process and therefore update our position of the sprite. Of course, we need to initialize the key state with a new hash map. And then we are heading to our input method. In case that you have problems with the auto completion, just get rid of the godot underscore API on top of the implementation. By declaring a new button, um, we are actually verify if a certain key is pressed, for example, and the result we will later use in order to store it in our new uh, created key state hash map. So therefore we use the input um, struct um, use the singleton from it and check with the is key pressed if a certain key is, for example, um, active or not. The result will we'll then just put into our hash map. That's one way how to do that actually. And as a side note, the insert will automatically, if it's already exists, um, replace it with the upcoming value. So that means either the new value gets inserted or updated. That's why we can just rely on that one. So there's an alternative way how to deal with the different uh, key states. So we could use a vector, initialize it with all supported keys, like left, right, top, bottom. And of course, if you want to extend it by yourself, add the button you ever or whatever you like. And then we iterate through the um, vector and adding our business logic in order to update the associated value properly. For small optimizations, we will now move the keys vector out and store it in within our struct so that not every time we have an input, this kind of new vector gets uh, recreated. It's a small tweak for optimizations. On that kind of point, it's not super important to do that, but at least that's a way how you could optimize it, for example. Because the keys, what are supported, are defined once and therefore this kind of vector for the keys will not change itself anymore. Following up, now let's implement in the physics process, for example, our update logic, uh, which will depend on the pressed key, updating properly the position of the sprite. 
At that point, we also simplify our business logic. So we iterate through all the keys, check the values from the uh, key states by extracting them, and then apply the proper transformation or position update as needed. As a next step, by using pattern matching, we are able to map the individual keys to our final kind of handling condition and apply or update the proper coordinates. We also should check um, if the current state, what we are retrieving from the key states, um, is or at least has a value. In case that it does not, then we should just return on that point. Because then, of course, we don't need to go through the match condition and check because the value is anyway not true. So therefore, we can make a simplification there as well. After that kind of messy refactoring, we actually will quickly try to extract the position for the sprite. Store it in a local variable and use that one later in the closure, to be more specific in the for each to update the position properly. Therefore, we need to declare it also as mutable. Then we are just assigning, for example, when the key up is pressed to the Y coordinate, a new value by extracting um, 1000 multiplied by the delta time. The delta time is needs to be casted because of its type. So F32, a float 32 should be used um, in order to do the multiplications. And the reason for 1000, because the delta time is in milliseconds, 
and we need to ensure to align that properly because otherwise it's either too slow or too fast so that's why we see that we use the value 1 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by its delta time so the delta time is referring to a value of around 16 which is which means actually uh, 16 milliseconds we multiply it by 1000 which results in 16 and multiply it by 1 in our example so that means we move each frame or each time the um, the physic process is called for 16 pixel in the dedicated direction and then at the end of our match um, scenario here we also add a print statement to the go dot engine so that we actually note when we press a button which is not supported that we can see it in our debugger on the go.editor and of course we also need to update the position of the sprite at last because otherwise we updated the value but they will not be um, updated for the sprite itself so therefore we set a new position and align it with our updated value By that implementation, we already support like up, left, right, and bottom navigation. Plus, we have this 45 degree navigation. So that means when the left button would be active and the top or up button would be active, you move like in a 45 degree. And as we are doing the development on the Steam Deck, we need now also to update the GD extension um, file with the Linux configuration, as otherwise it will not work on the Steam Deck. So therefore, just declare, similar as we did in the past for the Mac OS um, operating system, a Linux field, um, and then map it to the proper SO um, file in the target debug folder. In that particular case, it's called librust.so. And the same we apply for the release build in case that you make it or build your um, library or extension in, in a release build version. Then of course we need to navigate to the Rust folder and build the whole project. Next we are able to open it in the go.engine and then press play to proceed. Now let's move the D-pad and as you can see it's moving but there is a mistake on my end so sorry for that. It seems that one coordinate is wrong updated. So let's quickly heading back to the player RS file in our editor. And let's head it and here we already have it when we press on the right side, we should update the X coordinate. Save it, rebuild it, and now it should work properly. If you enjoyed also the development on the Steam Deck, please let me know because I could focus on the next videos also based on Steam Deck development with Godot and Rust. Thank you for watching. See you next time.